there has been there has been um, a lot of interest from the neighbor uh, neighborhoods and the community at large about uh, providing a safe environment for biking and walking along Victoria Street, and that really does not exist right now. It's a it's a heavily traveled county road. Um, does not really have a safe environment for biking and walking, and so um, Ramsey County has a uh, a, a policy um, and all abilities transportation uh, plan policy that really puts pedestrians and bikers and transit uh, as our number one priority um, on our system. And so we're excited uh, to have that policy and to implement it hopefully in the Victoria Street um, corridor. A um, couple other points and I'm gonna hand it over to Commissioner uh, Mary Jo McGuire for some opening statements as well. Um, this is a planning study. Uh, we do not have funding at this time to construct the project, but we're very excited about the opportunity to develop the vision with both communities. And uh, we're hopeful that after the study process is completed um, next spring or early summertime that we can look for some grant opportunities to, uh, to construct this project. So I guess with that as background, I'm gonna hand it over to Commissioner Mary Jo McGuire for some opening statements. Oh, thank you, Scott. I really appreciate uh, this opportunity just to welcome all of you here. We really appreciate you taking the time to uh, come to this open house. I bring greetings from our entire board who is uh, grateful for this public uh, interaction. We value the views of all of you that are here to, to contribute information and also those of you that we wanna hear your feedback. Um, I also bring special greetings from Commissioner Nicole Fretham who wishes she could have been here she was unable to be, but this is also a, a project that is near and dear to her heart. So I represent the, the Roseville area and uh, Commissioner Fretham represents the Shoreview area. And so we uh, together are very, very interested in this, in this part of, of, of roadway and uh, just look forward to the comments that you all will be making. I also chair, I co-chair Active Living Ramsey Communities and I know you'll be hearing from them, uh, I chair, I co-chair that with Peter Lindstrom from the Met Metropolitan Council and uh, appreciate uh, Connie and Rich and Jean Jardine for being, for being in here, for being at this meeting as well. I also um, know that uh, Representative Jamie Becker Finn wanted to be here and I'm not sure if I see her um, on the call yet, but she uh, is the chair of our house delegation for Ramsey County. She's also a Roseville resident and uh, as am I, and she is very um, interested in this uh, part of roadway as well, and uh, has, has had um, many people talk to her about this. So she's uh, very interested and maybe when she gets on the call, we can ask her to make a, a few remarks, but she's um, been a, a strong champion for, for listening, you know, of course to the public and, and finding out what, what needs to happen on, on these roadways and what we can do to all work together on it. So with that, I will just say thanks again to everyone for being here. Uh, we look forward to hearing, uh, hearing your remarks and to also hear from our, from our agency partners and, um, and guests that, uh, that are gonna present tonight. So thanks. Thank you very much, Commissioner, for being here this evening and we appreciate your support on this project. Uh, before we kick it off, I would also like to invite uh, Mark Culver, the Public Works Director for the City of Roseville, to say a few words. Thank you, Scott. And, and I just wanted to say that, uh, that this, this project or this study uh, is very important to the City of Roseville. To, um, trails, uh, sidewalks, and connecting the city, uh, making it more walkable and accessible is a very important um, priority for the uh, City Council of Roseville. Um, we have received petitions uh, from residents in the area for something along this corridor. And we're very, um, <clears throat> we've, we're very excited and, and grateful to Ramsey County for picking up this study to address the feasibility of something um, along this corridor. So just wanted to say that. And then also mention that a lot of times in these kinds of meetings, different types of questions pop up than, than um, what we're actually talking about this evening, and that's okay. And I just want to encourage people that if something does come up and we don't really address it because we don't have time, please, I encourage you to contact me um, 
through email or call me tomorrow or what have you. And you can find my contact information very easily at the City of Roseville's website. So um, if any, like I said, if anything does come up, feel free to reach out via email or a phone call um, after the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. You know, so I think we're gonna hand it over to Mary Good and the WSB team to kind of go through some slides to kind of overview the project. Um, as we are doing that, I would like encourage you to put your questions in the chat and those will populate internally for staff. And after we get through the presentation, we will attempt to address as many of those questions as possible. So I guess with that, I'll hand over to Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And welcome everyone. Thanks for making time in your evening to uh, come and um, listen to what we're doing here on Victoria Street. And um, I'll, you know, hopefully if you have questions too, we can answer those for you as well. Uh, so what we're going to do here tonight, we're going to run through the, this is the same presentation that we shared at the um, open house in Roseville at um, Emmett Williams last week, a week ago tonight. Um, and then, as Scott said, this is going to be, uh, it's being recorded and will be posted up on the website as well. So we're going to go over the steady purpose and goals. We've gotten into that a little bit already. Um, We've been, since we started working on this study, been working on uh, documenting the existing conditions. That's been our primary focus. So we're gonna go over those tonight. And um, if there is anything that you think we've missed or think that we need to take into consideration, please let us know that either tonight or through, um, through your comments. Um, We'll also go through, Antonio will be talking to us about uh, some trail design considerations, some things that we're thinking about as we get started in uh, thinking about what kinds of options we might be able to do in terms of a trail, what might fit out in that on that corridor now. We'll go over the schedule and next steps, and then finally how to share feedback um, outside of this, this meeting tonight. Okay, so the study purpose. We are uh, working on establishing a planning level design vision for Victoria that includes safe accommodations and space for bicyclists and pedestrians, as well as the people who are traveling by motorized vehicles. So we wanna make sure that this works for everyone um, now and into the foreseeable future. So our study goals, um, again, wanting to create that safe, comfortable walking and biking environment both along Victoria um, as well as across Victoria. We are looking at, uh, wanna make sure that we're making accommodations for people to cross um, safely where uh, and get to the destinations they're, they're uh, destined for. We also want to link to existing as well as planned trail infrastructure and also nearby destinations, so parks, schools, et cetera. Um, improve the safety of all users of Victoria Street. So right now it's very much an auto motorized vehicle centered um, type of environment. We wanna make it safe for everyone who, uh, in, in whatever manner they wanna get around um, on Victoria Street. And while doing that, we want to minimize impacts to property as well as develop improvements that are financially feasible. Uh, so getting into existing conditions, where what we're looking at is Victoria Street from County Road C in Roseville up to Cannon Avenue in the city of Shoreview. It's 1.8 miles in length. The speed limits, the posted speed limits out there are 35 to 40 miles an hour. Although we're well aware that motorized vehicles, cars travel in excess of that right now. The existing right-of-way or the space that the county has available to them for that roadway is between 62 feet and 84 feet. Uh, the average number of vehicles that travel on Victoria every day ranges from just about 5,000 vehicles, just under 5,000 to 6,200 vehicles a day. The road geometry or basically what the, how the road is constructed right now. It's, it's, it's largely two lane. It's a two way road, um, some with paved shoulders. 
uh, but primarily a rural cross section, meaning that um, rather than the curb and gutter, there is uh, there are ditches on either side of Victoria for the, for most of it. And then, of course, there are many access points along Victoria, not only the streets that cross it, but many driveways from the homes of residents who live, live along the street. Uh, relative to any facilities or any accommodations for uh, walkers now, there's just a small piece down at the south end, uh, right at County Road C on the, on the west side, just a small bit of sidewalk. For the most part, there's also some striped shoulders that are out there that um, I would say more competent bicyclists use. They're not continuous and they're also not, um, they're not uniform in their width either. And then parking, uh, for the most part, it's, it's restricted or, or no parking at all or partially restricted. But for the most part, it doesn't seem like people make a habit out of parking on Victoria. Um, again, I just wanted to touch on the existing cross section. So that's basically how the road is laid out. Um, what are the dimensions of various aspects of the road? So uh, these numbers correspond to six um, different cross sections that we've identified out there. I mentioned uh, within that 62 to 84 feet of right of way, there are just different a little bit different variations on the, the dimensions of the road. Um, I've got drawings of those. I won't spend a lot of time on them. I will, I will flip through them and um, they are up available on the, the project website if someone wants to take a look at those or get into more detail, but I'll just quickly flip through those now. So again, these correspond to the numbers um, on the previous image. So just again, you can see that there's uh, some different dimensions in terms of how the road is laid out. Um, wider in the south end by County Road C where we have turn lanes and whatnot in the sidewalk and uh, gets for the most part is relatively narrow. Um, I wanted to touch on crash uh, issues along Victoria Street. Um, we did take a look at crashes for a three-year period. Um, the crashes represented here are between, uh, they took place in the years 2017 through 2019. During that time, there were a total of 17 crashes along Victoria Street. Um, there are some areas that stand out. Uh, you see that there's a concentration of crashes down at County Road C in Victoria. Uh, also going up to uh, West Owasso Boulevard, there are in County Road C2, there are some crashes there. Um, moving up to the northern part of the corridor, there are some along, um, just along the road at Brenner Avenue, um, up to Edgewater. And then we see another little concentration of some crashes between um, Arbogast and Cannon Avenue. Um, Let's see, the most common types of crashes that occur that, and I should also mention, uh, these are all crashes that were reported to um, law enforcement. Um, I know when we were at the open house last Thursday night, we heard from people that, you know, there are plenty of um, incidents that they're aware of being residents along Victoria that don't get reported, but there's more than um, what's, what's shown on this. And we're, we're aware of that. Um, most common types of crashes include rear end and then runoff road crashes so that when people leave the road and that could happen, um, it, you know, if they're going too fast on this curve at West Owasso and they leave the road and, um, you know, hit a mailbox or a tree or a utility pole. Um, and then some other things that could be contributing to some crashes out there include the lack of turn lanes that could be resulting in some of those rear end crashes. Um, we also have heard from people that there are, uh, you know, sight line issues. There's just some spots where it's just really tricky to see, and those can also um, correlate to crashes where, you know, people maybe don't have enough time to stop um, or turn out in front of a vehicle they maybe haven't seen. We also are aware. I just uh, want to mention that there we are aware of a fatality that occurred in May of 2018 
at this far north end represented by this red dot at the very, uh, very north tip of our study area um, that we understand was a vehicle that veered off um, Victoria Street and struck a retaining wall. Um, relative to any crashes involving pedestrians or bicyclists, again, that are, had been reported, there are not any that were reported during this three-year period. Uh, we are aware of one that happened in 2012, um, where a vehicle backing out of a driveway struck a bicyclist. Um, so just wanting to get a little bit, a little bit more detail into uh, specific sections of Victoria Street. So starting off at the south end, uh, I, some of the issues that we've seen, again, we have a wide array of uh, cross sections or there's, you know, not, it's not a continuous, um, not continuous dimensions along the road. We also have connections to parks. Uh, right down here is where we have um, the ball fields, the Lake Owasso ball fields. Uh, also Central Park is uh, largely south of County Road C. Um, in terms of some environmental features, we uh, there's of course Lake Owasso and then floodplains and some wetlands around the lake. There are lots of utilities along the road, um, safety issues, which we just went over. Uh, some things that tie into those safety issues are the railroad tracks down at the south end and then this curve up at Lake Owasso. Um, a couple of images showing some of these things. This is uh, this one picture on the left is south looking, is on Victoria Street looking south towards those railroad tracks in County Road C. So, so some things you see in this picture are, this is this bit of sidewalk. It's a, a small section of six foot sidewalk. And then uh, predominance of power lines, both over the road and on the east side of the road. The image on the right is the curve. This is looking north on Victoria at West Owasso. And you see that curve, it is marked with some chevrons. Um, so it's not only uh, you know, a, a curve, you also have a hill going up a hill. So it's a tricky spot. Moving on to the middle section, um, this is from Lake Owasso Boulevard up to County Road D. County Road D is the uh, dividing line between Roseville to the south and Shoreview on the north. Again, we have a wide array of cross sections, connections to schools. We've got um, a Montessori school at the intersection and then down a little bit, we have um, Emmett D. Williams. Uh, houses on the east side and some of this area are higher at a higher elevation than the road. And we also have utilities. And again, some images showing these things. The picture in the bottom left shows those houses that are higher up. We also see power lines and then, um, I mentioned at the beginning this um, rural cross section, and you see that uh, you have a kind of a shallow ditch and water that drains. Um, that's how water drains in this area. The picture in the upper um, corner, upper right hand corner, is at County Road D. So you see some, because of the destination to some of the schools in the area, uh, you see a marked crosswalk. And um, there's a, also happens to be a transit stop in this area. And then if you look, I don't know if this shows up too well, but there is a bicyclist um, in this picture using that shoulder as well. Finally, the north end of the corridor from County Road D to Cannon Avenue. I mentioned that we have the safety issues um, at the very northern end. Connections to schools and parks. So just north of our study area, we have Island um, Lake Elementary, as well as St. Odelia's that um, kids from uh, the surrounding area go to. Again, we have utility poles, that rural cross section, including those ditches that hold and um, retain water. And some images of this uh, narrow ditches, the, um, the power lines, um, you see just an example of the driveways that have direct access onto Victoria Street. And then this picture on the right is at the, this is at Cannon Avenue, so the northern terminus of our, our study area. And you do see on the far right hand side where there is a trail um, that comes out from behind some trees that does um, north, just north of our project area parallel Victoria Street. 
so our study schedule, we are, um, again, I mentioned that since we started this study this past summer, we've been working at uh, documenting existing conditions. So um, we're putting a bow on that, um, that phase of the study with our, this public involvement effort that we're in right now. Uh, as we move into December and uh, the rest of November, we will start taking a look at typical cross sections. So what are some things based on the space that we have out there, the goals we have, et cetera, what, um, what are some options that in terms of what the, the cross section of the road can look like? We'll come back to you um, this winter with another open house sharing those typical sections. And then after that, get started on um, some corridor concepts. And we'll evaluate those, um, come up with a preferred concept and later uh, this spring and in the early summer, as Scott mentioned. And then um, with that, start looking for some funding. And then this, we'll tie all this up with a study report this coming summer in 2022. So with that, um, we're going to hear from Antonio Roselle with Community Design Group. He's on the WSB team, and he will talk about some design considerations. And I sh you should have uh, control now, Antonio. Thank you, Mary. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are excited to be chatting with you uh, about this important project uh, in your neighborhood. Um, so uh, part of what I want to do tonight is to share with you some, some of the items that we're keeping in mind as we are beginning to think about concepts for providing walking and bicycling connectivity along Victoria Street. Um, something that uh, you may have heard about and uh, we're aware of, and just one second, please forgive me, but the screen is, I wanna give it one more click. There you go. Uh, uh, the screen wasn't moving along, but now, it, now it's perfect. So um, I uh, wanted to uh, let you know about a wonderful plan that was developed by Ramsey County about four or five years ago. And I had the wonderful good fortune of working with Connie Bernardi, Scott Yonke, and some of the other great folks at Ramsey County on developing what uh, is called the Ramsey County uh, Pedestrian and Bicycle Plan. Uh, that plan uh, uh, put forward a vision for the entirety of Ramsey County. And the goal of that plan uh, is to develop uh, an all ages and abilities network, meaning uh, a, a network of walking and bicycling routes that are uh, not only uh, usable, but friendly and inviting for people of all ages and abilities in the county. So we want to have uh, a, a set of routes that are, are welcoming, that feel safe for families to ride on, that feel safe for parents to let their children ride their bikes to school, for example. So it's a very high standard of comfort and safety. And that is uh, the overall, the overriding vision of Ramsey County. And it's the overall, the overriding vision for this specific project. And so that is what is uh, uh, guiding the work. So all ages and abilities is a really key component of our work. Um, now, as we, are, uh, as we are thinking about all ages and abilities, then we want to be thinking about, well, what is this corridor uh, like? Um, uh, uh, what, what are some of the characteristics uh, that exist today and, and how do we uh, accommodate our concepts to address that? Uh, what I'm showing you right now is uh, a chart that provides guidance from the Minnesota Department of Transportation and from the Federal Highway Administration on uh, the kinds of facilities that we need to consider if we are going to have an all ages and abilities network. And so uh, it's a little bit complicated, but uh, let me explain uh, how we read this chart. So you see here um, uh, going up and down um, on, on the left side of the chart it says volume, vehicles per day. And on the uh, bottom of the chart, you see speed miles per hour. Uh, as Mary mentioned, uh, the volume or the number of total motor vehicles per day that we see uh, along Victoria Street uh, is around 6,200 uh, motor vehicles per day. So uh, you see this orange line uh, roughly around that area. And the speed, the, the, uh, and I should also clarify, uh, when we're using this chart, what we want to use is 
uh, observed speed, not necessarily posted speed, but because posted speed in, in, in some ways uh, it's aspirational, right? We want people to not exceed 35 or 40 miles an hour, but yet many of you know that uh, uh, sometimes drivers are going beyond that, but um, we're going to use just posted speed on this. And we know that there are segments here where the speed limit is 40 miles an hour. And so when you make these two orange lines come together, the place where they meet, which is this red star right here, uh, it tells us that for an all ages and abilities network, uh, what we need to provide is what is called a separated, separated bicycle lane or a side path. Now, what are those facilities? What is a separated uh, bike lane? Um, well, uh, a separated bike lane is a type of facility where uh, you are familiar with a, with a standard bike lane. Um, uh, rather than having it just uh, delimited by paint, um, and I'm having a little bit of trouble switching here for some reason, but let me see if I can get the screen to take me to the next. There you go. Uh, this is a, a separated uh, bicycle lane. Um, so it's a bicycle lane that separated with an actual uh, built up piece of concrete uh, so that cars can uh, really encroach into that space. And so it provides a really high, uh, high sense of safety for people who are riding um, along this roadway. And so uh, one of the concepts that we're exploring is uh, a bicycle lane of this type with the physical separation in addition to walking facilities for uh, people who also want to walk along this corridor. So it might be the roadway and then a bicycle lane and then a sidewalk providing that connectivity. That, that's a separated bicycle lane. Um, and the other kind of facility that we are uh, thinking about is, oops, a side path, which is, uh, as you saw in the chart, uh, the other type of facility that was uh, uh, called for. And so what is a side path? It's basically a trail. And you're, if you're familiar with the, uh, sh sometimes they're called shared use, uh, shared use paths or walking and biking trails. Um, a side path is the same kind of facility. It's not at the level of the roadway. It's actually moved up on the curb. So at the same level that uh, the sidewalk would be at. And so it has that, that height differential uh, providing separation. And also generally there is some planted boulevard providing some additional separation from the roadway, which helps that facility to feel like a very comfortable and inviting place. And so uh, this is the other type of facility. And um, uh, you may remember that Mary mentioned that the right of way available ranges from 60 feet up to um, 80 some feet. Uh, right of way is the land that is uh, owned by the city or the county and that is available generally for building this transportation facility. So um, the question is, you know, given that, you know, controlling width of 60 feet, and we don't want to, you know, think about going beyond that right away. Um, but um, so in 60 feet, it is, it could be possible to fit the two lanes of motor traffic that are there today. And it could be possible to do that and also put in uh, a side path or a trail on one side or both sides even. And so we're exploring that right now. We're looking at those options. Um, now, the thing that is uh, important to keep in mind as well is that to be able to do that, you know, to uh, fit within that available right of way, uh, 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 the, that rural cross section that uh, Mary mentioned, uh, you know, the, the ditches along the side of the road, uh, we would have to, because uh, those ditches take up quite a bit of space. And even though there are ditches there today, they're actually not uh, compliant with the standards we would have to use today, which would make them wider than what exists. So we would probably not be able to make these facilities fit within uh, a ditch or a uh, rural cross section. We would have to go to what is an urban cross section, which is simply we have uh, a curb and gutters and the stormwater is dealt with with pipes underneath the roadway and, and, and other, um, other mechanisms that are kind of out of sight. Um, so uh, in this image here, what you see is a curb and gutter section. And you can see 
Uh, so here's, here's the curve and the gutters of course are right here and then they go to a storm, a set of storm drains that are um, underneath the road. So that's one of the changes that um, we're also thinking about and considering. And so there's a lot of um, other investigation that we're in the middle of right now, but that would help us to make that determination. And we are, um, I think Scott mentioned this and also Mary that uh, we're gonna have another set of workshops coming up in a couple of months. In those workshops, we will have concepts for you to look at and to evaluate. And we will have the different options with the you know, side path on one side or two sides or uh, the protected bicycle lane. We'll think about intersections as well so that we have that all ages and ability standard, not only for going along Victoria, but also for going across Victoria. We wanna be able to have people of all ages. We want children to be able to cross the street safely uh, if they're getting to school, et cetera. Um, so uh, with that, I think that um, what I want to sum up for you right now is just some of the, some of the items that we are uh, considering and keeping in mind. And, uh, these are uh, some of the uh, potential benefits that uh, we are thinking about as we are developing these concepts and exploring them. Uh, first of all, we want to uh, provide this all ages and abilities uh, network so that uh, children and families can safely connect to the three elementary schools in the area, to the wonderful parks in the area, to the shopping destinations that are nearby. Um, so inviting facilities that you know, where somebody says, you know, you know, I'd, I'd love to walk to the park, but, you know, I don't feel safe because there is no sidewalk and I got to walk, walk in the ditches. And you know what? It rained uh, yesterday and the day before and they're full of water and I don't want to get my feet wet, uh, et cetera. Uh, or, or, you know, the cars go too fast and it's uncomfortable. They're too close to me and I don't have a designated space. So we want to we want to fix that. We want to make that better. Uh, we also want to increase safety for people who are driving along this roadway. You notice, you know, when Mary was discussing the crashes, there's quite a number of crashes in the area. And, um, you know, one of the things we want to do is to think about how can we uh, not only provide space for people walking and biking, but also make traffic uh, speeds and traffic behavior more consistent and more safe. So that's another another set of benefits. And, and, and lastly, um, uh, you heard me talking about uh, the ditches a little bit, uh, the, the rural cross section. Um, when we go to an urban cross section, to a curb and gutter, there is the possibility of including, of course, you know, this uh, different type of drainage and little de uh, uh, detention mechanisms that help to separate some of the uh, the debris and the grease and the oils that are in, 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 in the runoff water, you know, the water that gets washed off the road, and we can actually separate and clean to a greater extent than we can with a rural section. And so thinking about the, the health of nearby uh, lakes, bodies of water, you know, how we can also help improve uh, the water, uh, the, the quality of runoff. So um, anyway, those are some of the some of the considerations, some of the ideas that we are um, uh, exploring and thinking about. And I think that now I will hand it back to Mary for the next steps in our presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, any questions or comments, make sure to type them in the chat box. Uh, we're going to uh, get to as many as we can today. Uh, you also will be able to find these materials at the project website. And I, if I were uh, really good at it, I could tell you the URL right off the top of my head, but um, I don't have it memorized, but somebody will tell you, I am sure. And uh, please do uh, continue to be engaged. I'm looking forward to uh, chatting with you again when we have these exciting concepts to share with you. They're going to be fantastic. I, I just know it. Thank you. Thanks, Antonio. Uh, so just one last slide before we get into the questions. Again, this is a way to stay, ways to stay connected uh, as to what's going on with the project. Um, we uh, encourage you to share your comments, questions, and concerns um, here in the chat box, but also as um, Antonio mentioned, we have our project website uh, shown on um, the screen here. Uh, that project website includes a feedback map that you can put comments on. Um, you can pinpoint them directly if you are, are talking about a specific geographic area. 
There's also an online survey that is linked up to the project website specific to asking questions about um, Victoria Street. Uh, the, the map and the survey will be available until the 24th of November. Uh, open house materials will be posted on that project website as well. Um, in the meantime, if you have questions, we just encourage you to contact Scott Merrick, uh, the, the project manager from Ramsey County. So with that, I'll turn it, I will open the Q&A. And I know that we've gotten a number of questions. So I'm not sure, Scott, if you want to. Sure, I can start off the question and answer session, Mary. And I guess Thank as you. I do that, wondering if somebody from the consultant team could just turn us to uh, the project area map just for reference. Sure. Thank you. Um, so there's a number of questions in the chat that I will go through. And as I'm doing that, please feel free to add additional questions um, if you have any that come up. Um, so the first question is, why does this study end at Cannon Avenue and not continue further to the north? Um, the answer to that is that there actually is a separated trail, an existing separated trail along the east side of Victoria Street that begins at Arborgast or also uh, West Owasso Boulevard. And it continues north um, along Victoria Street. So um, that is why um, we're stopping the study at this time at Cannon Avenue, which is essentially just about a block north of Arborgast. Um, question number two is, who is in charge of the speed limit and will this project study the speed limit? Um, so two part question, number one, uh, the state of Minnesota has a state law that governs speed limits on state and county roads. Um, and that law essentially says in layman terms that um, whatever the um, speed is that 85% of vehicles are traveling um, over a certain corridor, that is uh, by law what the posted speed must be set at. And so uh, those speed studies are conducted by MnDOT um, at the request of uh, Ramsey County. We do occasionally also do our own um, unofficial speed studies, but um, the uh, official uh, speed studies that result in Posted speed limits being set um, are conducted by MnDOT. And again, it's the 85th percentile or the, the speed that 85% of the traffic is traveling in. The reason for that is because um, studies have shown that um, when, we, when we have a consistent level of speed throughout a corridor, um, that really lends to a safer condition uh, for everybody that's using that corridor. And so um, I, I know that I, I will acknowledge and I, I know that um, you're all aware that there is a concern about speed in this corridor. Uh, Ramsey County is aware of that. Uh, both cities are aware of that. And um, one thing that we, you know, a couple of things relative to that. One thing is enforcement, obviously making sure that uh, you know, the partnership between the city and the uh, county sheriff's department is active and, you know, enforcing the posted speeds that are in place. Uh, some other things that we can do uh, from a design perspective, uh, looking at the lane widths, um, 12 feet is kind of the standard lane width, um, but we can um, look at uh, slightly narrower lanes. Uh, there are some uh, MnDOT standards that, uh, um, kind of limit the de degree to which we can narrow the lanes, but we can somewhat narrow the lanes, um, narrower than, than 12 feet, and that can be something that helps re re reduce speed. Uh, there's other things like landscaping and um, center medians, um, other design treatments that can also help with, uh, with speed as, um, as well. Um, the second part to the question was, will this studies um, look at the speed limit and, and study the speed limit. Um, we will look at the speed 
as it relates to you know how we can do different design treatments that I mentioned, but we will not be doing a speed study in this corridor as part of this study process. Um, and we will not be changing the speed limit, posted speed limit um, as, as part of this study. Um, and there's the next question. Um, how does the physical separation of a trail work with driveways? I think Antonio addressed this a little bit in his comments, but just to kind of reiterate what he said there, um, because of the rural section with the ditches and the culverts, it obviously would not work very well to build separated trails uh, in that environment. So for the uh, separated trail uh, concepts, we will have to look at an urban section, which includes a uh, curb and gutter uh, and, uh, and storm drain. Um, there's another question about the proposed Victoria Shores development. Um, between Woodhill and C2 and how that would affect the study. And uh, I'm gonna address that a little bit, but hopefully leaning on Mark Culver, the public works director for Roseville to maybe help me out on this a little bit, Mark. But uh, just as a, a background, uh, there is a proposed development just north of the park, um, north of C2 on the, uh, on the uh, west side of Lake, Lake Owasso, between Lake Owasso and Victoria Street uh, with a number of driveways that will be entering Victoria Street. Uh, Mark and his team have been working with the developer on uh, putting that plan together and the county is working closely with the city to do that in a way, you know, that could potentially um, integrate a trail, but I, I don't know the exact status of that right now. And hopefully, Mark, you can provide some additional information on that. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, just so people know that that uh, development proposal is in a it's in a weird state right now where we're doing an environmental review, and later, per, uh, presuming that that environmental review doesn't go much further, um, the developer will be bringing their uh, final plats and, and final proposal to the city council this winter, and. When that happens, staff will be working with the developer probably to dedicate some right away, make sure there's sufficient right away and space on both sides of Victoria for a trail slash uh, or whatever. Um, so that whatever comes out of this, it's ready. They may, there, there may be some interest on their side to put some sort of pedestrian facility on the east side of Victoria, even if this study says, well, we're gonna put the trail on the west side. They may still want something on the east side for the string, the string of homes or the row of homes along uh, Victoria to have pedestrian access to a shared dock or something like that. So it's possible that something like that gets built anyway, but we're working with them to make sure that, that both sides of the road are ready for a trail corridor, um, whatever comes out of this, this study. Thank you for that, Mark. Um, next question, um, have, has the county quantified the oil and road salt runoff issues along Victoria Street and how much of, re of a reduction are we talking about? Um, I guess the simple answer to that question is that is really beyond the scope of this study to analyze the actual volume of road salt and oil um, runoff and uh, stormwater runoff as a result of this project. Uh, that is something that we would look at more in the preliminary and final design stage um, of the project, not during the, the uh, planning stage, but certainly is something that we're mindful of, especially with uh, Lake Owasso, um, just Im immediately to the east. Um, next question, uh, please elaborate on how funding will be addressed. Um, sure. So as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, um, Ramsey County currently does not have any funding allocated to this project. We have what's called a Transportation Improvement Program, or TIP. It's a five-year construction program of uh, projects that have committed funds uh, to construct. And so those are bike trails, roadways, transitways. Um, throughout the Ramsey County um, geographic area. Um, 
the funds that are associated with that TIP could be uh, city funds, uh, city property tax funds, uh, city uh, municipal state aid funds, uh, city um, county state aid funds, and city um, county property tax funds, excuse me, also could be state funds or, or federal funds. So there's a variety of city, county, state, and federal funds available um, in our TIP to construct various projects. Um, at this time, this project has really not evolved to the point of being ready to be put into a construction program. There's um, much to be worked out as far as the future vision and the design. Um, and uh, so once we get all of those things sort of flushed out a little clear next spring and summer, we could uh, potentially look at the possibility of putting it into a construction program. But even at that point, we would still have to have uh, um, significant conversations, I guess, with both cities to kind of determine um, where the project is, is financially and how, and how we can move that forward. But um, yes, there are a variety of sources out there. There's also the Metropolitan Council uh, Regional Solicitation. They have a process that's actually kicking off uh, after the first of the year for 2026 and 2027 uh, federal projects. So we're probably not gonna make the cut for that solicitation, but um, if this project can get ready, um, there's another solicitation in a couple of years in 2024 that we could potentially consider, uh, but there's a lot of unanswered variables about the funding right now that, that need to be addressed. Uh, besides checking on the website, are there going to be updates on the project um, and additional opportunities for discussion? And the answer to that is yes, there, there are going to be a variety of opportunities for additional input throughout the process. There's going to be additional in-person and virtual public meetings over the winter and spring months uh, that will get into more detail about the design concepts. Um, and get and getting the public's input um, on those. Um, there's also, as uh, Mary mentioned, there is the interactive map on the project website where you can provide input. Um, and I believe we're also considering having some uh, small group or uh, focus group meetings uh, sometime later this winter um, as well. And there'll be more details on, on that coming out uh, probably uh, after the holidays. Um, next question, what happened to the $10,000 that I spent to line my clay sewer pipes to the street? Um, I'm not sure how to answer that question, so I'm going to pass on that for now. That might be something that the city staff uh, could follow up with that individual on uh, at a later, later time. Um, Next question, um, have you or could you consider connecting this trail to the Central Park North and the existing trail from uh, Heneal Drive that currently ends at the railroad tracks? Could possibly use a boardwalk to avoid crossing the tracks. This would allow for a much safer access from um, neighborhoods south of Lake Owasso. Um, that's a very detailed question that I guess I'm not really, I'd have to look at a map to kind of orientate myself um, to respond to that, but certainly I will consider all possibilities of connecting this trail to other uh, adjacent trails um, in the neighborhood. Um, next question, uh, the curve and topography of Victoria at Owasso, um, and continuing south uh, presents safety issues for all pedestrian cyclists and cars. And certainly I think that's more of a comment than a question, but we certainly appreciate that and, uh, and recognize that. Um, next uh, question or comment, I have lived on Victoria for 35 years and the only issue I have with drivers are those who seem to have Difficulty driving the posted speed, and typically it is due to cell phone use, reading the newspaper, um, lost and don't know where they are, and time, and uh, one time watching TV on, on their dashboard. I have never had a concern walking 
or uh, driving on the road from my time in high school to the present. And certainly that's a driver uh, behavior issue. Um, that's uh, something that is, we're hopeful that law enforcement can help, uh, help us enforce. Um, next question, uh, stormwater drainage is a concern, especially because of the delicate Lake Owasso wetlands near Victoria. So opportunities to improve this would be good. I think uh, that the county certainly in both cities uh, would agree with that comment. Um, uh, next question or comment, um, I live by Victoria and County Road D and we take care of water runoff on our own properties. Just more of a, a comment there. Um, next comment or question is, it is disappointing that this clearly is a done deal. We have an opportunity to place a beautiful trail on the Lakeview, Chatsworth and Rich Mid Avenue corridor and sadly no one wants to look at this. Instead, there is a push to build a trail so we can, um, et cetera, et cetera. So certainly I, there's a disappointment here from this individual that we're not looking at a different um, trail uh, that they're concerned about. Uh, I guess uh, to speak to that, I would say that um, there are a number of trails that are desired throughout Ramsey County. And uh, one exciting thing that I, I think I would say in response to that comment is that um, next year, the county will be embarking on its first ever countywide transportation plan, a uh, multimodal transportation plan. So as part of that process, we will be looking at the full extent of the Ramsey County uh, bikeway and trail network in addition to uh, roadway and, and, and transitway uh, facilities. So as part of that, we can look at other facilities uh, above and beyond the uh, Victoria Street corridor. Uh, Scott, I, I wonder if I could contribute a little bit to that response too. Certainly. Um, uh, Victoria, you know, these alignments were first identified in that countywide pedestrian and bicycle plan as well. So um, part of what um, I think the goal is, is to kind of implement the recommendations that were initially looked at in the plan, uh, in that planning effort for, for, uh, from five years ago. And that's not saying that if it happens on Victoria, then there is not a facility anywhere else. Just the same as with cars, uh, you know, it's not that like, there's only one street for cars and then you can't drive in another street. It, we were trying to do the same thing with bicycles so that people have multiple choices. And so if you build, one facility here that doesn't preclude another facility being located nearby. It's just, we're trying to keep uh, to the plan. So that's the alignment follows that plan for five, from five years ago and um, trying to build multiple options. That's also one of the ways in which we make it easier for people to choose to walk or bicycle uh, when they want to get to a destination. Um, so I, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, and also just a small clarification on the discussion about runoff. I think that there may be a misunderstanding that we're not talking about the, the drainage of, or runoff from people's individual homes or properties. We're talking about runoff from the roadways. So the water that falls on the roadways, uh, it goes into a curb and gutter. It's not uh, the, the, the rain and, and the water in somebody's house and, and personal um, a parcel of property. It's, is from that transportation uh, corridor. So, yeah, thank, thank you, you for those uh, comments, An Antonio. That's helpful. Um, the last comment that I see now um, is uh, as it relates to roundabouts. There's a question Are roundabouts or other road modifications on the table? Um, lower traffic speed, I think I already addressed that. Uh, pedestrian crossings, et cetera. Um, the focus of the study is to look at developing a conceptual design that will work well for vehicles, uh, bicyclists and pedestrians in the Victoria Street corridor. So um, we really can't look at that in a vacuum by just looking at one mode. So yes, there will be a comprehensive look at Victoria Street and developing conceptual design layouts that consider 
how the vehicle traffic and the bicycle and pedestrian traffic can work well together. And so, um, yeah, that will look at uh, roadway design, um, possible roadway design modifications um, in conjunction with um, on-street or off-street off bicycle and pedestrian facilities. And uh, along with that, you know, there is a potential, although we haven't really zeroed in on anything in particular yet, of looking at uh, possible intersection improvements, uh, which potentially could include roundabouts. We really haven't explored that to any detail um, at this point. Um, the other uh, comments that I see are just more, um, just more comments and, and really not questions uh, for, for the general um, discussion. So um, I'll just give it maybe a couple more minutes to see if anybody else has any additional questions. Um, and I was just going to also double check to see if Representative Becker Finn was able to join us. I know that she was intending to be here. I don't see her listed anywhere. Um, looks like she wasn't, wasn't able to join us, uh, but we really appreciate Re Representative Becker Finn's interest in this project. And she's uh, something that she's very uh, keyed in on and uh, we're excited to work with her as well as Commissioner Fretham and Commissioner uh, Mary Jo. McGuire um, and both cities. We wanna thank um, Mark Culver again, the public works director for the city of Roseville for joining us tonight and providing his, his input. Um, I don't see any additional questions coming in and we do have just one minute remaining. So I think um, at this point, I am going to um, just thank everybody again for joining us tonight. Uh, please continue to monitor the project website. If you don't know the exact URL, just type in in Google or any search engine, type in uh, Ramsey County Victoria Street Bicycle and Trail Study, and that will take you to the project website. And we look forward to working with you throughout the winter and summer on, on this exciting project. So thank you very much and have a nice evening. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you.